who around this time in your first year or two in the WWF of the big stars did you find most approachable or would be willing to give you advice that kind of thing back then when I first started in WWE is what you're referring yeah, to yeah let's say your first year in 98 yeah, I would have to say, you know, Jack Lanza, uh, Tony Gurria, um, as far as agents go that I would look at um, at the time when I first started there. Uh, those are two guys that I would, you know, kind of rely on uh, for direction. Um, as far as the talent, the the upper echelon of the talent there, Um I would try to go to Austin every once in a while because let's face it, that guy had a connection with the fans that was unbelievable. And so I try to pick his brain a few times, but Austin always seems standoffish to me, very defensive. And so it was, I never really got a whole lot out of Austin. Austin loved to talk about uh, old school wrestling, which I'm a huge fan of old school wrestling. But while he's telling you different stories about old school wrestling, different things you can do, the whole time you just feel like he's very standoffish. He's very um, protective of his current position at the point, at that point in time, which is completely understandable, but a little bit paranoid, I think. And I think that made it uncomfortable for me to approach him on a regular basis. Um, guys that were comfortable to approach, I would say Rock was very comfortable to approach. He was uh, he was a guy that was um, he had that it factor. That's and I think what whatever it is you want to call it that Rock had that made him approachable at just as an average human being. I think it's that it factor that has propelled him to the upper echelons of Hollywood today. And so I noticed that in the backstage, very clear, distinctive differences between approaching somebody like Steve Austin to ask for advice on certain things and going up to The Rock to approach him to ask him about certain things in regards to making emotional connections with the fans. Rock, very approachable. Austin, the appearance of a being approachable may be there until you actually approach him and you, you just get this idea that, okay, he's very suspicious about why I'm asking him these questions. He can tell he's standoffish. He's, uh, you know, just two different, two different um, characters of human beings, you know, really. But yeah, I'd say rock was probably the most approachable. Now rock, I would never go to it for advice on how to wrestle. <laughs> Cause let's face it, rock. Yeah. Ain't the best wrestler in the world. He does very basic things, but he's smart enough to make those very basic things over like Rover. The most ridiculous elbow drop on the face of the planet. The elbow drop sucks, but it's the best elbow drop going. And people bought into it. They love it. And it's So to me, I would go to Rock for, hey, how do you create that emotional connection with the fans? Because that clearly, you didn't have to question it. He knew how to create that emotional connection. But when it came to actual wrestling, I would probably go, not even so much with Austin, but I would prefer to go to Austin over Rock. But mostly, I mean, you'd go to people like Chris Benoit at the time, Eddie Guerrero at the time, um, you know, Fit Finley when you and he came, Fit Finley, Dave, uh, Dave Taylor, uh, Stephen Regal. Those were guys I would go to when it comes to hey, I want to learn how to do this in wrestling. Those are the guys I would go to. But you know, when it comes to getting that emotional connection with the fans, The Rock was the most approachable guy for that. 